Hello, what's up, YouTube photographer Ronis Twitter and this tutorial I'll be showing how you can easily edit outdoor photos from the very start to the very end without skipping any steps. So without further ado, let's get started. And if at all you find the video helpful, simply like the, this video because when you like the video, it helps you to push and recommend this video to many people out there, and it's also going to help the channel grow in the long run. So you're going to be understanding how you can edit raw images and make them pop in Photoshop and later on how you can do skin retouching and color grading for the final image so without further ado let's get started so you can see I'll just come to open up a photo in Photoshop simply select it so this is this is the raw file taken by Abram pictures so I'm just going to come and right click and select open with and select Photoshop 2020 and as soon as you do that, it's going to automatically open up the camera raw filter in Photoshop. So you can see details for the raw file. So it is a raw file right here. So the first thing you tend to do, or I tend to do when it comes to editing photos in Photoshop, is first of all correcting the lighting and contrast issues regarding this very image. So I'll just come right here to where it says basic, and I'll, I'll work on it white balance and contrast and lighting issues regarding the image so first of all come to the highlights and take the highlights down and you can start gets back the information in the blown out highlights right there and i'll do the same for the whites i'll take the whites down then after that i'll just come and add contrast to the image because i prefer my images to have that nice and natural contrast then i'll come and open up the shadows to open up the information in the shadow areas then I'll slightly take down the blacks I think that looks okay and it looks great so I'll just come to my vibrance and add a tiny bit of vibrance so to make the image pop even a little bit more I'll just come to where it says calibration and I'll just come to the saturation of the blue primary and just take up the saturation slightly so you can see a before and after what of what we have right now so after doing that, the next thing is going to be coming to the, the color mixer panel. And uh, under this, you can always manipulate the colors in the image to whatever you want or to your taste. So for this case, I'm just going to first of all demonstrate for you. Hue is a given shade or when you're working with hues, we are changing a given color to look like the color on top of it or below it according to these colors, the way they are moving from up to down from the reds, oranges. So if at all I'm um, to target the blues, you can you can either make the blues look like a color below it, which is the purples, or you can make the blues look like the color on top of it, which is the aquas. So basically that is how hue is working. And saturation is the intensity of a given color. You can you can increase the saturation of the blues, or you can reduce on the saturation of the blues to your liking. Then also we have luminance it is the brightness level of a given color you can brighten up or reduce on the brightness of a given color so what i'm going to do i'll first of all come to the hues and i'll simply work on the greens so i'll just come to the greens and i'll play around with the green color because i want the greens to pop so i'll take the greens towards the right hand side towards the aquas and uh, let me see how i'm going to do this so you can either make the yellows towards the green a little bit to make the greens pop in the background so next thing i'm going to do i'll just come to the blues and see what works best for uh, this blue color so i'll take the blues towards the aquas which is the left hand side and come the saturation of the blues and slightly increase on the saturation just like that i think that is okay so that's the before after before after now the image is now looking better and it is popping so if at all the greens are a little bit too much you can always come to the saturation and reduce on the saturation or the intensity of other greens in the background so I'll just slightly reduce on the intensity or the saturation of the greens and the yellow slightly so that's the before after before after so next thing is going to be opening up the image into Photoshop for us to do the final adjustment. So what I'll do, always make sure that you come to this profile right here. So you sing, single click and put in these settings, the bit to 16 bit and 
sharpen for screen is selected right here and amount set to standard and hit ok make sure the space is rgb and 300 pixels per inch is selected and hit ok and just come right here to open to open the image into photoshop so this is the image after opening it in photoshop and usually what we have to do we just want to first of all do a skin retouching so for this base color i'm going to be using actions and if at all you don't have my actions simply check the links in the description to buy or purchase my skin retouching actions so the very first thing i tend to do when it comes to photoshop is first of all cropping the image in a ratio of 45 so i just get the crop tool and select the ratio of 45 or 8 by 10 so after doing that i'm just going to crop it i think that looks fine it looks okay and hit enter on the keyboard to approve the crop settings then after doing that anything is going to be doing the skin retouching or doing the skin work so i'll come to my actions and simply play my 16-bit action and simply hit play so for this i usually determine the amount of gaussian blur for the radius or how much the amount i want to blow away from the skin so i'll just come and take it up just like that i think at around five five is okay and it, so basically you move the slider up the point whereby you just start to close out on the skin details and hit okay and the action is going to play so i'll come and delete the black and white layer and hide the high frequency layer so I'll come and get uh, my mixer brush tool and set it as a clean brush. And the option that says clean the brush after each and every stroke is selected. With a weight of 9%, load 75, mix 90 and a flow of 100%. Make sure sample areas is not turned on. So I'll simply zoom in slightly on the image. Don't zoom all the way in, just zoom in slightly. Reduce on the size of the brush by using the bracket keys on the keyboard. And if at all your tools are showing this kind of plus icon, press the caps lock key on the keyboard and simply left click and hold down and you mix the colors on the skin. So to mix, you mix and hold down. So basically you left click and hold down and paint to blend the transitions on the skin and mix these dark colors alone and mix the highlight alone just like that. So basically that is how you can use and apply the mixer brush tool so come right here and mix those colors just like that come and mix right here so don't mind about that color because i'm going to be fixing that later on during the color grading process mix the hand area just like that and mix this area so basically for these kinds of photos you don't have to do so much so just come to the neck area and also work right there. So this looks okay, looks great. So don't forget to mix these other areas like uh, the hands. So reduce on the size for all you're mixing on a smaller area and continue working and mixing on those tiny areas. So to increase on the size or decrease on the size of the brush tool. You can use the open and close brackets on the keyboard to increase or decrease on the size of the brush tool depending on how big the area you're working on is. So reduce on the size and mix. So I'm just going to zoom in slightly because I want to work on the face. Mix just like that. And I think you can see how natural the results are going to be at the end of the process. So just mix all those areas and by just doing that we are almost retouching or we are almost done working on the skin area using the mixer brush tool so basically what we are doing we are basically using the mixer brush tool to blend or even out the transitions within the skin tones so that we can have nice and smooth transitions between the skin tones so turn on the texture layer or the high frequency layer Look at the image at a distance to see a progress that's the before after before and after so you can select the high frequency layer and get your clone sample tool and make sure 
the hardness is set to zero and soft round brush is selected. Opacity and flat 100%. I'll zoom in by using Ctrl plus or you can use Command plus on the keyboard. And with the clone stamp tool, we have selected the texture layer. And how to remove a blemish, we simply hold down the option key on the keyboard or you can hold down the alternate key on the keyboard and left click near the blemish using a small size that is the size of the blemish and copy clean skin from this area so you left click and copy while holding down the alternate key on the keyboard or the option key and simply left click over the blemish to replace it with clean skin basically so that is how you can clean up or remove these pimples, blemishes, and imperfections from uh, the subject's skin. So right now we are almost done because uh, the model has a pretty nice skin. So I'll just do this, do this, do this, and do this. So right now we are almost done with the cleaning up process. So let's remove these lines and do some clean cleaning up right there right there and right there can even get rid of that look at the image at a distance so this is what we have right now for skin retouching before after before after so let's create uniform skin tones for the model so just come and create a gradient map adjustment layer when it applies this color don't mind so whichever color that is appearing on the image don't mind about that just come and select the gradient icon and hide it left click on the color option then left click on this stopper and simply left click on the color option make sure the sample size is set to 5 by 5 average and zoom in and choose a darkest point of the skin tone don't choose a black point choose the darkest point in the skin tone so that is the darkest point of the skin tone hit ok and now do the same for the brightest point of the skin tone so i'll sample from that area then click in the middle and set the location to 50 and left click on the color option and choose what you feel is the mid-tones of the skin and hit ok so we have copied the colors of the skin already then activate it and change the blend mode from normal and change it to color select this layer mask and press ctrl i on the keyboard to invert the effect and after inverting it just come and get the normal brush to right click and get the brush tool and make sure it is a soft round brush hardness at zero and mode is normal opacity at 100 percent flat 100 percent and make sure you have black and white on these color swatches reset to black and white press d on the keyboard and you can reset also by left clicking on these tiny boxes so by doing that we're just going to come and paint on the skin using a white brush increase on the size by using the bracket keys so to zoom in you basically use ctrl plus on the keyboard or you can use command plus on the keyboard to zoom into the image so just come and paint on the skin just like that don't mind if at all we paint extras because you can always correct every mistake So I'll just come and paint on every area that has skin to create that kind of even and nice skin tone for our model in this case. So I'm just going to paint just like that. So I don't mind if at all I paint extras because we can always correct those issues. So just come and paint on the hands just like that. And by just doing that, you can notice that we now have a very nice and even skin tone for every area of this very image. You can see how the hand is now having uniform, a uniform kind of skin tone. Hold the space bar to paint, rather to move to a new area that you haven't painted. So don't forget the face as usual. And by the way, don't forget to like the video if I told you are benefiting or learning something new from uh, this very tutorial. And if I told you are uh, a new person watching and you're not yet subscribed. 
so right now we are done working on the skin so it is time to correct the areas we may have accidentally painted so to correct switch the brush back to black and with a black brush you can do uh, the corrections in the areas you may have accidentally painted so like this area right there so to paint back color you can switch the brush back to white and paint in the color grading so let me just paint once again there and i think that is perfect it looks great so it's a before after before after just see how nicely done the colors have gotten to be in this case so after doing this the next thing is going to be making sure that we have painted every area so after that just come to the feathering and simply feather it a little bit and you can come the opacity if at all it is too much and reduce on the opacity to your liking so I'll just go with around an opacity of 75 so that's the before after before after remember to always leave everything looking natural and realistic as possible so let's do a little bit of eye whitening we shall just come right here to the adjustments and create a hue and saturation adjustment layer and after creating it just come to master and simply take down the saturation and press ctrl i and get the brush tool with white as the foreground color you're just going to come and paint into the eyes in this case just come and paint and in this way it is going to be whitening the eyes for us just like that paint and continue painting so after we have done that the next thing is going to be doing the final color grading process so we're going to come right here to selective color and can simply come to the blacks and simply intensify the blacks a little bit and cool down the blacks if at all they are too much and i think that is it you can even come to the blues and play around with the blues just like that to see what works best for us so i'll just leave it on the cool side I think that is okay so this is the before after before after so after doing that the next thing is going to be saving the image so just come right here to file export and come to export as so when you come to export as it's going to open up this export as window so simply select jpeg and also change the color space to embed color profile and also convert srgb and change the resample to by cubic sharp and simply export the photo so this is how you can easily edit a photo in photoshop from the very start to the very end and if at all you have enjoyed this simply like this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you are watching and you're not subscribed to this channel ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching and seeing yet more videos on this channel and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating